Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Alright, pack one, pick one. Archfiend of Ifnir, that's a nice one. So if we take that, we typically want to end up blue-black cycling, but any black cycling deck is going to be happy with it. Very powerful card. Uh, Gravedigger would be amazing too, although we're probably not going to wheel it. Avon Windguide's decent. I like the Drake, maybe there's a small chance we can wheel the Drake. And the Ritualist for the Green Ramp decks, and then there's a Desert as well. And a Scrapper for the Red Aggro deck. But easy Archfiend first pick. Although it don't necessarily count on anything useful wheeling. Alright, second pack. Well, Insult to Injury is a bomb. Not sure what card you would take over it. They took a common over it. I don't know, maybe a Gustwalker? Still seems a little weird. I'll take Insult to Injury, maybe just end up Black Rat Control with a bit of cycling. You typically want to just cast both halves in the same turn, so you get to deal 4 damage to a creature and player, and then all your creatures deal double damage. But every now and then you can also use the first half and then the second half. Well, I mean, Overwhelming Splendor is powerful. Problem is it's 8 mana, so you can only really play it in a ramp deck where you have some Oasis Ritualists, for example. Doesn't seem like the deck we're setting up for, but a Ruthless Sniper seems excellent with Archfiend in the deck, since we already want to prioritize cycling cards, and we can maybe wheel a Scarab Feast. And do we have any Cyclers? I guess the Shimmer Scale Drake and the Vizier in blue, and then the Desert in red. So this is a decision point. I can take one of the blue cyclers, potentially give up on insult to injury, or I can take the desert and commit more to red. We are seeing a decent amount of blue cards here, so maybe blue is still open, and I should just take the blue cycling card, especially when there's more cycling synergy in blue-black than black-red. But of course insult to injury is quite good too. I mean, by taking the drake, it is a colorless cycling card, even if it is two mana. I could still potentially either splash the drake or just play the drake in a black-red deck and just use it as a two-mana cycler, even if it's not ideal. So I think I'll still hedge my bets and take the drake here. Alright, got some good options here. Sifter Worm, so no one's drafting the ramp deck. Love that card as well. A riddle form is going to be a bit better in the blue-red spells deck as opposed to what we are doing. But I do like Wandering Death a decent amount, Blue Cartouche if we want to lean more heavily towards blue would be great too. And then there's always Evolving Wilds for fixing if we do want to splash. I think Wandering Death is probably the safest bet since we're definitely playing black and we're interested in cycling cards, so I think uh, that's going to be my pick. Now Desert of the Mindful looks great as another blue cycler. Don't really see any black or red cards I'm interested in. <laughs> and no one wants the Shatterstorm. But I'll take another Desert. Even the Countervailing Winds is a consideration here. I mean, this card's actively good. If we can cycle some stuff turn 1 and 2 and then turn 3, this can already be an active counterspell. Uh, Eternal's also decent. Better in blue-red spells as opposed to blue-black cycling, but if we need a 2-drop this will still be quite serviceable. Between the winds and the desert, I think I still take the desert. And I don't mind an essence scatter. Our blue-black deck is usually going to be pretty controlling. So having some counter spells, especially when we can keep up our cycling cards and our instants at the same time, makes essence scatter quite a bit better than it would be in a deck that wants to tamp out more. And another Drake. Wow, we wheeled the Drake out of the first pack. No respect. And Snaga Oracle could be fine, or we could take a June Beetle. I mean, June Beetle is a reasonable blocker. Uh, Oracle better in the Embalm decks than the Cycling decks, but it can still potentially enable something like a Countervailing Winds by putting stuff in the graveyard. I think I'll take the Beetle here, just in case we end up without any additional 2-drops. 
and compelling argument is amazing. One mana cycler. So red didn't seem particularly open. But we don't have to play insult to injury and just be blue black, that's fine. Hoo hoo, wow. Well, got pretty lucky to open Jace. On color rare, and it's pretty good rare. Can hope to wheel maybe the deserts. Final reward would also be quite good, but we're not gonna wheel it. Uh, can maybe get like, I don't know, eternal or strategic planning. But Jace it is. So I can pretty safely cut the insult here. Don't think we're moving out of blue-black at this point. And we could technically splash like both halves, but we won't be able to play both halves at once with just a single red source. So it's not really a splashable card. Definitely take the thirst now. We've got double deserts and we can easily pick up a few more. And this is a premium removal spell. As much as I want Vizier, we can maybe wheel one of the cards that's still in the pack here, Vizier, Seeker, or the center, maybe even the Floodwaters, has a bit of synergy. No, Jace wasn't originally in Amoket. This is a card they added later. This is from Shadows over Innistrad, I believe. Ooh, wow. Liliana's Mastery. I mean, we're not really a zombie deck, but it's still five mana, put six power toughness in play at the very least. Our curve is getting a little chunky. I'll admit. But what else am I taking? Like a pyramid that's also a slow card. I think it's still the mastery here. And then if we pick up like a miasmic mummy on the wheel, it gets a bit better too. And while Drake is a 5 drop, it's also kind of a 2 drop since we can cycle it. Vizier seems excellent in this deck. Uh, not really a nest of scarabs deck. Not a fan of the Sentinels, even in the cycling decks, but if we get one later, I might still play it. Although there's also an Agony that I didn't see. Agony is excellent removal, and we're pretty light on removal, actually. Any chance we wield the Vizier? It's not impossible if we're the only blue-black cycling player. And Agony is just so good against the white-red Exert decks, can kill two creatures at once. Like, Vizier is good, but it's not like a bomb, like some of the other multicolor cards. Definitely taking the reward now. Already have double Drake. I'm a bit concerned with my curve here, since we've got a million five drops. But again, some of these we can cycle. I'll take probably the Riverwinder over Scarab Feasts. Mummy would also be reasonable just as a two-drop zombie to go with a mastery. But uh, Riverwinder seems better than Feast if we're gonna just cycle it anyway. Not gonna take a 2 mana off-color cycler. Stamina can be good, but it's better if we have a lower curve, and our curve is pretty chunky. Uh, Wasp, I guess, is a 2-drop, even though it's not really what we need in this deck. Or I can take an Evolving Wilds just as a tap to dual land, but we already have two deserts. I'll just take a Wasp. And, yeah, I mean, Sentinels is a 3-drop to fill out a curve. I don't love it in this deck. I might just take the Illumination anyway. It's either 1-mana Cycler or 4-mana Draw 2. And I'll take the Desert for sure now. Alright, so last pack. I do need to pick up some cheaper cards, some 2 and 3-drops, although Seeker of Insights will do nicely. Can always use more removal. And then do we want a mummy or bone slasher? I don't have a ton of zombies and I do want to be able to block with my creatures. So probably mummy, but there's a chance we don't play it. But yeah, our deck's shaping up nicely. We've got Jace, Archfiend, Mastery, Sniper as another cycling payoff. Decent amount of cycling cards, couple of removal spells with thirst, final rewards. Splendid Agony. And then, wow, we even wield a Vizier. Pretty lucky. And then, the fact that most of our cycling cards are also good cards in general, like the Drake and the Riverwinder, means that in the late game we're gonna have plenty of stuff to play out. Last pack. Uh, not the most exciting pack for us. 
could consider splashing cast out, but I didn't pick up any Evolving Wilds. And our deck seems pretty good, just blue-black, so don't necessarily want to introduce more variants. Don't hate the Aven Initiates, although we don't need more late-game stuff. I guess it's still a 4-drop, I don't have a ton of stuff at 4. Yeah, maybe it's the Initiate anyway. Just don't have a ton of ways to enable a Riddle form in this deck. Alright, got some options here. I do like Horror of the Broken Lands quite a bit, but it is another 5-drop, which we don't really need. Uh, probably looking at Labyrinth Guardian just as an early blocker that we can embalm at 4 mana. Wouldn't mind another Desert. Would definitely take Horror over Argument if we're taking a Cycler. But uh, Guardian seems decent here. Soul Stinger's also consideration at 4 mana as a good blocker. Although don't have a ton of synergy with it. Do we have any Lethal Sting synergy? Don't have a ton of expendable creatures early. I mean, I could still play it. The alternative is probably a blue desert. Which is reasonable, we've got three deserts already. A fourth desert is probably still an upgrade. Let's go with a Lethal Sting. I don't think this is a Nombo with a uh, 2-drop we just picked up. Since it doesn't actually target our creature. So it seems fine. And probably take another Essence Scatter over Seeker now. Might even wield this. But Essence Scatter is quite good alongside all the other cycling cards we have. Don't have any Cartouches to combo with Trials, so it's kind of medium. If I picked up that cast out, Farmland would have been nice. As is, it's kind of like a 2-mana Cycler that's not a Desert, so it's just worse than a Desert of the Mindful in our deck. Don't really need another Mummy. I guess I'll take the Trial on the off chance we get some late Cartouches, but probably not going to play it. I will definitely play another Splendid Agony. <laughs> Shadow of the Grave. Probably still not good enough even in this deck. I could just rare draft it or I can take another Lethal Sting. I don't think I'm playing two Lethal Stings, just don't have enough creatures for it. I'll just rare draft here. Ooh, Lord of the Accursed. Don't have a ton of zombies, but it's still a fine curve filler at 3. Better than the Sentinels, probably. And again, I have a mummy in the sideboard already. Just rare draft again. Soul Stinger versus Arguments. Yeah, maybe I do want another 1 mana cycler. Soul Stinger is a reasonable curve filler at 4. But it's just not very synergistic. Don't think it matters. I guess Blinded Bat is a zombie for those zombie synergies. But we've got way more playables than we'll ever need. So cutting down the deck to 40 cards is going to be a challenge. So let's have a look. I guess first we want to make a pile with all the cyclers. And the removal we'll put in a separate pile here. Don't think I'm playing Trial. The Wasp is also easily cuttable. Double Agony, one Lethal Sting. Rewards. Double Essence Scatter. The Seeker of Insight's not actually great in my deck, since I'm not casting a whole lot of non-creature spells, I'm usually cycling them, which doesn't enable the Seeker. Could be okay alongside, like, Essence Scatter, so we can still activate it in the opponent's turn. But it's definitely not at its best here. Riverwinder, Double Drake, we can cycle. Illumination, we can sometimes cycle. Wandering Death... Probably gonna cycle it about half the time. Don't mind one Miasmic Mummy here, just as a random 2-drop that's also a zombie for Lords and Mastery. And do I want a second Mummy or even the Festering Mummy here over some of these other 2-drops? 
Seeker just doesn't seem great here, so I could see cutting it. The Winds of Rebuke might also not be necessary. Uh, if we ended up with countervailing winds, this card would have been better, because then filling the graveyard is actively good for us. It has a little bit of synergy with Labyrinth Guardian and Avon Initiates, but that's about it. I guess it can also set up Wonder in Death. But yeah, I don't think I need Rebuke. Like, I've got a decent amount of interaction between Essence Scatters, Thirst, Sting, Double Agony, and Reward. Don't think we'll need the Windsor Rebuke. And then, yeah, maybe it is worth it to play an extra mummy over, like, a June Beetle. Just have more zombies to go with the Lords and the Mastery. And I guess the mummy also enables the Archfiend for what it's worth. It's not only when you cycle, but also if you discard another card. So the mummy could technically enable that as well. If we embalm, they also turn into zombies, so that also works with Lord. And then... Could easily get away with 16 lands just because we have so many 1-mana cyclers. On the other hand, we have a lot of 5-drops that we don't want to miss out on. So don't want to be too greedy with the mana. The Wasp is definitely not super synergistic in our deck. 2-mana to 1-flyer, we're not really an aggro deck. But it can apply a decent amount of pressure. So I don't hate it, but I could see cutting it. Alright, we'll cut the Wasp. It's also not the best combo with our own lethal sting, whereas I don't mind putting a counter on one of our other creatures here. And then do we play 16 lands? I mean, when we have three deserts in a mana base, we're kind of incentivized to play more lands as opposed to fewer lands, because we can always cycle them later. So I think I'm sticking to 17. Some either cutting... I guess an argument or a mummy. I guess I can cut one argument. We don't have a million cycling payoffs, and I still have a decent amount of cyclers here. And then a mana base, pretty evenly split between blue and black. So, let's see, right now it gives me 8 blue sources and 9 black. Most of my early game creatures are black, but I also have Asa Scatter that's blue. But I guess Drake is colorless to cycle. So I guess favoring black is okay here. Also have more double black cards at 5. Alright, this looks good. Blue-black cycling. Something a little different. Fine hands. The one downside of playing the mummy in this deck is that we are pretty top-heavy, so we kind of want to keep both lands and spells, so discarding to the mummy is going to be kind of tricky. But I guess Embalm kind of works. Keep up Asa Scatter. Sure, they can have that. Probably just cycle the desert here. Keep up Essence Scatter, maybe cycle Illumination, although if our opponent wants to play the draw go game, I just want to cast this for 4 mana. And then maybe play Mummy, keep up Essence Scatter later, because we now also have the Mastery to pump up our zombie. Can discard the Initiate and get it back later. Save the one. Oh yes, that's a juicy ritualist. So now that I'm no longer gonna be keeping up essence scatter, do I cycle illumination? I think so. I do want to hit my land drops and I'm probably just casting the initiates. Ooh, wow. All the five drops all of a sudden. Making me regret cycling the desert. I mean, if we can play one 5-drop after another for the rest of the game, 
will probably be in reasonable shape. Alright, so that one we are cycling. Let's do it main phase, in case we draw Tamp Deserts. Do I play Miasmic Mummy? And then if I do, what do I discard? I mean, I could also cycle Art Fiends, but it seems pretty good here. Although, if we play Jace and Mastery, we're probably going to be in pretty good shape too. Yeah, I could wait until I have Arch Fiend in play before I play Mummy, but the problem is, with infinite 5 drops, it's probably going to be better for me to play a 5 than it is to play Mummy plus Agony. So I don't foresee playing the Mummy anytime soon. So I either play Mummy now or I cycle Arch Fiend just to hit my land drop for next turn. I think I'm going to go for the non-greedy play of just cycling the Arch Fiend. To make sure I at least hit my land for next turn. And do it now in case we draw deserts. We still have a Wandering Death to maybe get the Archfiend back later, but I'm not counting on it. Like, if I can slam down a Jace on a stable board, it's gonna be difficult to lose. And our opponent could also just have a final reward in hand, making this. A pretty average turn. So we'll see what they do. If they play a big creature, we can just play Jace and bounce it, and then maybe keep the initiate back to protect Jace. If they keep up a bunch of mana. Alright, perfect. That's exactly what we wanted to see. And I think I'm playing the deserts. That way it's going to be easier to start double spelling. Just keep the initiate back to block the Prowler. One loyalty on Jace is probably still better than three damage. Now they are playing Rats. They could have some burn spells in there. Alright. And now we get to untap. Wander in death to maybe get back Archfiend later. Start by plussing. Think fast. Now it's bottom. If I find a land, I could maybe go mummy plus mastery. Which seems kind of nice. And then discard agony. Yeah. Can't blame them. On the play with a pretty nice opening hand. Gonna keep up as a scatter, then the question is... Are we gonna hold the drake or cycle it at some point? I guess I might be okay playing the vizier for now. Worst case scenario, they play the two mana binding mummy, which would be pretty annoying. Ooh, initiates. Would have liked to counter that one. Alright. I mean, this turns into a 2 4. This turns into a 4 4. Although at some point we can maybe cycle with Archfiend in play to kill it. So for now, I'm just gonna chill, keep up Essence Scatter, probably cycle the Drake end of turn anyway. Just hit my land drops. And then we can play some random garbage to set up the Archfiend. They're exerting. I could main phase cycle in case we had another one mana cycler to block, but then I'll be shields down on Essence Scatter, so we'll just take the four. Camel, a 3-2. Yeah, I think we can let them have it. A Ruthless Sniper. 
Now I don't have the mana to play Sniper, Cycle and pay for the Sniper's ability. Can play Sniper, pass and then still keep up Drake to Cycle to grow the Vizier so it can block the Camel if they don't use Fanbearer. The Mummy can also trigger the Sniper, but again I don't have the one mana. And I think I'm still keeping up as a scatter here. And then end of turn we'll probably still cycle Drake to just hit our land drops. Wind guides. Alright, I think I gotta scatter that. It's not ideal since they can also embalm it, but it's definitely a close call. Camel attacks, and then could technically double block, but I'll, I'll just take it. And then next turn I can cycle Drake and kill the initiates. Yeah, let's just do that. Do it main phase to prevent any pump spells from saving it. Kind of thinking what blue and black one drops I might have. And we'll pass. Of course, the advantage of waiting until the opponent's turn is that I would have had a 2-4 Vizier to block the Camel. But killing the initiate seemed pretty important. Next turn we can slam down Archfiend, and then the Mummy can enable the Archfiend and a Sniper. Alright, and then we're gonna tap down Vizier anyway. Take three. And are we attacking? No, let's just hang back. So if they can kill Archfiend, we're in great shape. I think I'll throw the Vizier under the bus. Who wonder in death is excellent. Alright, where do we begin? So I could cast Wonder in Death. Just getting back double Drake here. And then still play Mummy after playing a land, discarding Guardian, triggering Archfiend and Sniper, killing the Camel or the Fanbear. I guess I can start by just playing the Mummy, discarding Guardian here. Alright, they do have Scavenger Grounds, so I do have to be a little careful here. And they can activate this. Alright, I mean, that's fine. We can still cycle the Wanderer in Death. But I still probably discard Guardian here. Could have moved to combat first. Maybe they would have used Fanbear on Archfiend. I guess we can force the issue. Fanbear is probably the bigger problem than the Camel. Alright, good. They're gonna use a Fanbear. So that happens, and now I can still wander in death. Don't need to take any unnecessary damage. Yeah, they probably didn't want to use Scavenger Grounds because it also excelled their own Avon Wind Guides. I can attack with Archfiends and just play a Drake to block. That seems fine. I 
And maybe cycle the other one. Opponent is it? A lot of life, so it's gonna be an uphill battle to actually kill them. Yeah, they have one Hatchup Oasis remaining. Although I can always cycle Drake shrinking the flyer. So it would only pump for two. I guess they could still attack past the Drake. But if that's their entire turn, I'm pretty happy. Yeah, like a Sandworm Convergence definitely still beats us. Eh, they're going for it. I mean, I'll take five. That's fine. And then now, is it better to play the Drake or cycle it? I think I like just sending in the Archfiends. Uh, I have to be a little careful with impeccable timing dealing 3 damage, but if they block with a 2-3 on the Archfiends, I can still respond by cycling Drake and paying for Sniper, shrinking down the Flyer. And then timing wouldn't kill my Archfiend anymore. Keep Drake on defense to hold off the 2-3. And then I can uh, embalm the Guardian. So I think I just send an Archfiend for now. Point takes 5. And it's probably fine to play my land out. But now I can cycle and pay and still block. Opponent's definitely sandbagging a bunch of creatures that they don't want to play into the Archfiend knowing about the Drakes in hand. But this seems totally fine. And our opponent concedes. Alright. Well, Archfiend definitely steals the show here. Alright, on the draw, with a nice draw here, I'll keep. I'm not sure what to discard to the mummy at this point, but I think I do want to play it. Could it be correct to discard Lethal Sting? Then I can go turn 3 Lord of the Accursed, turn 4 I don't have a plan yet. Get rid of the lethal sting. Opponent also maybe on a blue-black cycling deck. Countervailing wins. Uh, doesn't exile does it, just counters. Riddle form's kind of scary. They could technically have a Scarab Feast or the one mana combo trick to animate Riddle form. I don't really mind trading my zombie since we have Wonder in Death this turn. I don't have any other plays really. But if they don't trade, that's kind of bad for me since I won't be able to play a blocker for their zombie. How likely are they to trade? I will try. Opponent takes it, sadly. So now I could still decide to cycle the Wandering Death or the Drake, or I can just do nothing. I guess we'll do nothing. 
keep the cyclers for after we play the Archfiend. Yeah, I could take a decent amount of damage if they can enable Riddle Form again this turn. Doesn't look like it. Opponent passes. Kind of a close call here. They could also have a sensor, which is a reason to wait until we have one more land. I don't hate Drake as a test spell. I mean, it's still pretty good if it resolves, since it can block the riddle form. Resolves. Definitely hang back for now. Just cry with riddle form. That's not too bad. It's possible they have removal for the Drake, but they want to wait until their turn so it can enable Riddle Form to attack. Unburden, wow. Alright, decisions. The greedy play is to keep Wander in death to eventually get back Archfiend and Lord. The, like, reasonable play is to just keep the Archfiend. This game could drag out for a while. I think I just keep the Wander in death. Yeah, they currently can't counter Wander with Sensor or Essence Scatter. Hmm. Interesting. So maybe they do have that pump spell. Or not. We'll never know. That resolved pretty smoothly, so I don't think they have a uh, counter spell here. So does Mummy attack? Sure. So they know about the Archfiend now, but we still have some other good cards in the deck. Jace, Liliana's Mastery, more Shimmer Scale Drakes and expensive cycling creatures. And a couple deserts we can cycle so we don't flood out. Keeping the Drake back so we can block Riddle Form. I'm pretty comfortable playing a longer game, knowing how good our deck is, that I don't want to trade 3 damage for 3 damage if they can enable it. I see, grinds. So it's like a 2 mana, Splendid Agony essentially. Okay, I'll take 3. Illumination is actually an amazing draw here. Now they could have a 3 mana counter pretty easily, but they can also scry with riddle form, so I don't want to make them scry if they have nothing. Yeah, countervailing wins would be a little annoying, but I think I still go for it. Alright. And now, do I attack with everyone? I think so. Even if they kill the Lord of the Accursed, I can still cycle to shrink down the zombie. Or I could keep the Lord back. No, that doesn't help if they kill the Lord. Maybe keep the mummy back. I don't know, Puns at 12, I do want to try and present lethal for next turn. Although, of course, I would prefer to keep Illumination to maybe shrink down the riddle form as well. I'm fine with the trade. I'm not gonna cycle just to keep my mummy alive. Do they also have Splendid Agony? Alright, that's fine. We'll pass. And I mean, just casting Illumination for four is also a valid play. Now, if they find white mana, they get to use dust, but still leaves us in a pretty good spot. Yeah, the minus one counter from Archfiend would stay on riddle form. Alright, that makes sense. So, that happens. I could still cycle Illumination after this turns into a creature, which doesn't sound like a bad idea. 
or I can keep this to just hard cast for four mana. We do have a lot of powerful five mana plays in the deck, so maybe just trying to draw towards them for next turn is fine. Shrink this down, still get a card, hit him for four. Yeah, let's cycle. We get two draw steps essentially to find some action. And now this will permanently be smaller than the Shimmer Scale Drake. Alright, that's a good draw. Hit for four. Opponent's pretty far behind. They do have a if near dead lands they can use now, but if that's their entire turn, they're probably still dead. So what's the worst case scenario? My opponent has like another final reward, kills my Drake, turns this into 2-2, but it still doesn't block my 2-3s. Uh, probably start by cycling this, in case we find some removal of our own. And attack. This is only sorcery speed. Commits, and then they have to chum block. So yeah, putting that counter on the riddle form, I think, paid off in the end. Now that they have memory in the graveyard, I definitely want to play out my lands, because if they make everyone draw seven, I want to have more lands in play. But if that's their entire turn, they're probably still dead. Alright, GG's. Alright, on the play. Reasonable hands, a little bit land light, but I can always cycle the Drake to hit my land drops. Now that I'm on the play, I probably do play the Guardian on 2 instead of keeping up Essence Scatter. And then on turn 3 I can maybe keep up Essence Scatter or Cycle, depending on what we prefer. Mummy can maybe discard the Initiates. Alright, Steward is annoying, but we can clean up the tokens eventually with Archfiend or now Agony. Missing my land drop is bad. Could be a reason to main phase Cycle the Drake. But there's some scary creatures my opponent can play next turn, in which case I might want to scatter. So, I'll play it a little slow. Yeah, that's probably counter-worthy. Alright, land is good. Could play the mummy. I think I'm just gonna pass and probably end of turn cycle the Drake if we don't need to agony. Could attack, trade basically two damage for one damage from the token they make. But we're kind of a control deck against the red-white aggro deck, so don't want to take any unnecessary damage. Once we win the game, we're gonna win the game by a landslide. So definitely playing the deserts, and then kind of want to hold the mummy until after we play Archfiend to get an extra trigger. And for now just pass. Like putting one counter on the steward is still valuable, because then later it dies to the first Archfiend's trigger. So I could maybe go one counter on the camel, one on the steward and block but we'll see. Alright, another nice juicy target for the minus one, minus one counters. How greedy do we get? If 
I play Archfiend and they end up killing it right away without me ever getting a trigger, I'm going to get punished if I end up using Agony on Camel and Steward here. Or I can just put one on Avenger, one on Camel. I guess a Steward doesn't matter too much if the Archfiend sticks around. So maybe I should kill Avenger and put one on the Camel. So if we draw land 5, probably just going to slam Archfiend since I don't have a 1 mana cycler to maybe wait until land 6. It's also not bad. Although I think I still want a Thirst Scrapper here. It's kind of close. Because if they want to attack with it, if I have 2 blockers they kind of have to exert depending on what combo tricks they have in hand. But again, I just don't want to take any unneeded damage. Could still play the Mummy 2 discarding initiates, but then we don't have any ways of triggering the Archfiend. So I think my play is just Thirst to Scrapper pass. 2-3 is doing a good job on defense, not take any unneeded risks. And the Initiate is a nice card to potentially discard to the Mummy's ability. Since we can still get value from it later. Alright, that card can be scary. Would have been a better target for Thirst, potentially. So this can tap down or prevent a creature from blocking when it attacks. So now what? Just play Avon Initiate. Also, then the Camel can attack into it if they tap down Guardian. So maybe playing the Lord is still better then. Could also cycle Drake to try and hit my land, although now that they have a big creature, keeping more ways to enable Archfiend after I play it might be beneficial. Because then I have Mummy and Drake to potentially put minus one counters everywhere. And then I would be taking 4 per turn if they don't have removal. But if they have some sort of Anthem effect like the uh, White Trial, we could be taking a lot of damage. So don't love my position. Missing a land drop definitely hurts. Hey, CGB with a raid. Welcome, welcome everyone. Thank you for uh, the raid. We're currently in an Amon Cat remaster draft with a pretty sweet blue-black cycling deck. Also, a missed land drop might cost us the game here. Lethal Sting. I guess it deals with the Cerodon, so it's not the worst. Problem is, it shrinks our lord into a 1-2, so it doesn't block Camel or Steward all that well. But it probably still has to be done. Can hold off the 1-1 tokens, take 4 if needed. Could always try to cycle Drake first to try and hit my land, but if I miss, I'm probably just dead. I guess this would be a 3-3. Three, three. Serodon taps down one creature. If they attack with everyone, I'm still almost dead here. Alright, so we're hanging on by a thread here. If they don't have a great answer to Archfiends, then that could definitely stabilize us. Trample 2. Think we might just be dead now. Land 5. Yeah, playing Archfiend doesn't do it anymore, sadly. Would still be dead on board. So close. Don't see an out. I guess I can cycle Shimmer Skill Drake. 
but I can't think of anything that would save me here. Uh, maybe if I draw a Ruthless Sniper, I can play Sniper and Mummy. I guess I still have an out here. Ruthless Sniper, one drop. Plus Mummy. Alright, uh, no Sniper. GG's. Yeah, a couple decisions that didn't pan out, like holding the thirst for the Cerodon could have worked out better, although Scrapper would have done quite a bit of damage too. Cycling the Drake earlier could have worked out better if we found a land right away. Solid hands. Probably gonna hold the Illumination so we can grow our Vizier. I play the Swamp so we wouldn't give away the fact that we have a 1 mana Cycler. Put on on Black White Zombies maybe. I mean, this is like a free attack for them, basically. They could have a Mighty Leap or Splendid Agony. I don't really care about my Vizier all that much, to be honest. I'll block. That's a nice one. A few ways we can play this. If we pass... I could technically also just cycle and block, even if they exert. Or I can still just agony afterwards. Could get punished by a pump spell, I guess, but the counter would stay on it, so it would still die afterwards. So we'll just pass for now, on the off chance that they play another one toughness creature pre combat. If they use a fan bear to tap down Vizier, great. Make them waste their turn. And then I will probably use the Agony now. Because I kind of want to just hard cast Illumination to hit my land drops next turn. Could have also taken three just to see if they would play another one toughness creature. Use our life total as a resource. Yeah, we'll just pass. Could it for one with the... Uh... Alright, they're just gonna tap it down, sure. Just wanna play my Illumination. Start playing my 5 drops, got plenty of those in the deck. play the Drake and then I'll keep the Vizier on defense since they will probably tap down one of my creatures with the fan bear if they want to attack with the mummy don't really want to take any unneeded damage since again our late game is pretty strong seeing the advantage of the deserts now could wait to cycle until the opponent's turn to grow the Vizier so we have a bigger blocker they're probably gonna tap down Drake here and it also leaves the flexibility of playing the final rewards. So we'll just uh, play Island and pass. And then we'll try to keep the argument in hand for as long as possible, so we can maybe combine it with Sniper or Archfiend. Although... I could just block here and then cycle twice. Don't hate that idea. Are we gonna get a free Gustwalker or do they have a trick? Could 
Got another Riverwinder I could cycle. Alright, two counters there. They're gonna play it safe in case I had another cycler. Alright, I'll just hold the Riverwinder then. Since we can just play it next turn. Seems pretty good against double Fanbear. And then I think I'll start attacking with the Drake, since they won't be able to tap down my Riverwinder and the Gus Walker's tapped. Alright, now I probably cycle main phase. See if we can hit some of our spicy 5-drops. Another Drake. They are kind of answered by the fan bears. Could also make a case for holding some lands in hand in case of the uh, discard 2 effect. We'll see what happens. I force them to exert Gustwalker and they can't attack with Mummy because they do get to tap down my Drake here. So I think I do keep it back. And at some point we can maybe kill some of the fan bears. We'll see. Take three. Still have two removal spells in hands. If they play something big and scary. Does that qualify as big and scary? Sort of. Do I lethal sting? I could also lethal sting putting counter on a Riverwinder, but... Riverwinder doesn't get tapped down by the fan bears, so I probably should keep that one as large as possible. And then just lethal sting using the drake. I can attack with everyone. They get to hit me back for two with a mummy. But that's not so bad. And I could also final reward at instant speed. We are flooding a little bit here. I love to see the Trumblock. And if they don't play any scary creature, then I might just final reward the Fanbear end of turn. <laughs> Alright, I see. Do I kill one? I think I still do. Means I get another good attack in. Who nice. Right, let's move to combats. Smash. And what's their last card? Cartouche. It's pretty good here. They can give it flying and hit me in the air. And then the fan bear can tap down the shimmer scale drake. And the riverwinder putting in a ton of work. So this forces a chum block, so I might as well attack with a 2-2. They'll chum the Riverwinder, take 5. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Got their next creature covered. And we got there, alright.
And we've got a nice opening hand. Probably okay to play deserts. Opponent cycles arguments, so also maybe a cycling deck. And we'll keep up Scatter, or do we play Vizier? I don't hate applying a bit of pressure with Vizier. Next turn, keep up Scatter. If they want to censor this, that's fine by me. Yeah, like, we've got so many expensive 5 mana plays that would get censored as well. I'm pretty happy if the Vizier gets countered. Like, this card looks very good, because it's a multicolor card, but it's actually just okay. Not the most threatening creature, but we just want to try and make sure the board is relatively clear by the time we play Jace. If our opponent plays another creature, we can just slam down Jace, minus, and then have a Jace in play we can protect with two removal spells. Alright, the crab they can keep. So do we think they have another sensor? A sensor could be bad, but this is such a great window to resolve Jace if they don't have it. Plus they could just be holding on to an essence scatter. I'm just gonna go for it. This is not a coward stream. Uh-oh, they have it, don't they? Maybe just a cycling card? Yeah, it seems good enough. Can't play the next turn, but it's a good win condition eventually. Bully. True words spoken by Jace. I think I know what to do. Nice to have an instance alongside our other instance in case we don't need to kill anything in a turn. And do I want to cycle anything? Can probably wait until I have one of my cycling payoffs in play. We do have to be careful I don't end up decking here, but we've got plenty of win conditions. I am who I choose to be. Hmm. I mean, Mummy's actually not terrible. It blocks the crab. It's a nice test spell just to kind of test out the waters. Because I probably don't slam down Riverwinder here. So, let's see if the mummy gets any response. And what do I discard if it resolves? Probably the arguments. Now my opponent could also be on a mill deck, in which case we're kind of playing right into their game plan of drawing a million cards. But we can still maybe ultimate Jace. This card's impeccable timing. I mean, their hand could also just be all removal. Don't want to wander in death back anything, so we'll pass. Plenty of instants available. Deserts hold my mummy, sure. As tempting as it is to just agony here on the crab so I don't lose any loyalty, it seems kind of a waste. No offense to the crab. This one I will remember. Think fast. 
Yep, that's a good one. If they have an Essence Scatter or other counter spell, this probably gets a response. And then we can resolve the Riverwinder. And Wandering Death can get them all back, so... We're in decent shape, but we don't have any counter spells for... Like a Godfarer's Gift, if it comes down, could be pretty scary. Chase takes one. Not a good one. 18 cards remaining, so still not too afraid of decking. Let's see. 7, 8, 9. I guess I don't hate Swamp here since that lets me play Riverwinder and keep up Essence Scatter. Aha, uh -huh. they are gonna mill me. Fair enough. Twelve cards remain. Well, I can get back Archfiends with the Wandering Death here. It's not a good one. So now the question, am I gonna stop drawing with Jace? I mean, if I can get to an ultimate, I can stop any future mill cards. If they have two more compelling arguments in hand, I could just die. So it's a bit of a scary spot. I could also bounce my mummy to make him discard. That seems fine, because then the mastery also makes a zombie more relevant. I just want to put as much power and toughness in play as possible. Probably discard Avon Initiates. Then another removal spell in hand. Play Mastery, keep up Scatter. And the next turn I can maybe Wander in Death. Bag the Archfiends. Sure. So I can Agony to kill both. And bounce a crab. I know who Could also I again bounce a mummy to make him discard their last card. This seems fine. Opponents at 4, 10 cards remaining. What's the safest way we can play this? Probably just play Guardian Keep of Assassin Scatter. GG's. And this looks like a pretty solid hand. I guess we don't have a creature to go with a lethal sting. But still, Essence Scatter plus Agony is nice interaction to set up Jace. Alright, I'll play the Vizier. Your opponent on blue black also maybe cycling. Um yep, we'll just hit for one, keep up scatter. Mm, 
I'll just pass. Hopefully they tap out for another creature, which we get to Asa Scatter, untap, play Jace. Cartouche. That's fine. Jay's Bouncing Sentinel still works. And Blue Black doesn't have too many ways of actually dealing damage to Planeswalkers directly. I guess the worst case scenario is at 7 mana they could steal my Jace with the enchantment. Alright, we've got our card draw engine in play. We get to draw two cards per turn for the foreseeable future. Alright, nice. It's one of the better cycling payoffs. It's not a bad blocker. I am who I choose. Mm, don't think I need mummy. So how about Lethal Sting, Killing Manifestation, and then keep up my other instance here. Is that better than playing Drake? Playing Drake is okay, although there are some cards that could end up killing my Jace. And the Manifestation is going to be a long-term problem, so I don't mind killing it. And then this can shun block if needed. Do I shun block now? If I shun block, then they don't need to cycle anything. I kind of want to force them to cycle a bunch, and then we can still get them with agony, make them waste their turn, and still save Jace. Do they have another one mana cycler? They don't. I should have seen that coming. Now both viziers have two minus one minus one counters. No creature to get back with Wander in Death at the moment. Think fast. Why are all these mummies showing up? Alright, that's a little better. I'll use the Drake as a bait spell in case I have an Essence Scatter here. And then I don't hate just playing the Desert, because we want to play Archfiend and maybe cycle in the same turn. Yeah, seems fine. I don't envy my opponent's position. Although we don't have any reactive removal spells if they can resolve something big, besides potentially bouncing with Jace. Alright. Cartouche kills my Vizier. And a Bone Picker for one mana. Fair enough. So we've got options, which is a good thing. Can play Archfiends plus Keep Up Scatter or Cycle. And then Jace does Jace plus or just bounce the bone picker. Bouncing bone pickers pretty safe. Otherwise I have to trade it for my Drake and I kind of just want to kill it for free with Archfiend. So yeah, sure. I am who I choose to be. And I'll keep Drake on defense for one turn, I think. And then next turn we can start getting more aggressive. 
If they can exile the Archfiend, we can get it back. That's fine. And that's fine. Alright, I'll cycle the Drake. I think I know what to do. Oh boy. Yeah. Wonder and Death can also get a bunch of cycling creatures back. And 23, not bad. Definitely had a pretty stacked draft with a lot of powerful rares, so... Got our fair share of luck in this one. Let's claim our prize. Crank some packs. What do we get? Ooh, Unesh. Cryosphinx Sovereign, not bad. Some nice wild cards. I'm actually looking for these rare wild cards since I don't have many left. Heaven to Earth can be pretty decent too. Can always like play the Heaven side without paying anything for the X just to get access to the Earth half. Glory Bound Initiate, definitely a good one too. Mythic Wild Cards, I'll take those. And the Harsh Mentor wasn't able to defeat our horde of zombies today. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.